Assalamualaikum everyone, I hope you all are fine. Here we are with the fourth episode of our topic, the Great Seljuk Dynasty, where we will be sharing with you information about Sultan Al Faslan, the man who opened the gates of Anatolia. Seljuk Empire's second Sultan. Al Faslan, originally named Muhammad bin Daud Chagri, served as the second Sultan of Seljuk Empire and was the great grandson of Seljuk, founder of the dynasty. Renowned for his military prowess, he significantly expanded Seljuk territory, securing dominance through victories over southern and northwestern rivals. His powerful triumph at the Battle of Marzikert in 1071 marked the beginning of Turkmen settlement in Anatolia. His formidable fighting skills earned him the epithet heroic loin in Turkish, signifying his martial achievements. Alpaslan's family and legacy. Alpaslan, the son of Chagri and nephew of Tugrul, emerged from the esteemed lineage of Seljuk, the founding sultans of the Seljuk Empire. His grandfather, Mikhail, further strengthened his martial legacy. Alpaslan's contribution to the dynasty included fathering numerous children, among them Malik Shah I and Tutish I. While the details of his marriages remain unclear, his wives encompassed the widow of his uncle Tugra, Akha Hatun or Sefariya Hatun, who was a Karakhanid princess, and the third one was adopted to be as niece of Bagrat IV of Georgia. Notably, Alpha's brotherly dynamics involved rivalries with Suleiman ibn Chagri and Kabuz Bey, while his nephew Kirish Aslan played a significant role in opposing the Franks during the First Crusade and the Crusade of 1101. Alpaslan's Rise and Early Reign Alpaslan, accompanying his uncle Tugrul in campaigns against the Fatimids, initially engaged in administrative duties in Khorasan at his father's behest. Introduced to the renowned statesman Nizam al Mulk, he laid the groundwork for his future role as vizier. Following his father's demise in 1059, al Baslan assumed the governorship of Khorasan. The succession dispute that emerged after his uncle Tugrul's death was settled at the Battle of Damgan in 1063, where al Baslan triumphed over Kutalmish, securing his position as the sole sultan of the entire Seljuk Empire. His territorial reach extended from the Oxus River to the Tigris River. In 1064, al Baslan undertook a successful campaign in Georgia, capturing strategic regions. Despite initial submission, the Georgians regained independence from Seljuk rule by 1073 or 1074. Stabilizing the Seljuk Empire In the process of consolidating and securing his empire, al Baslan found a capable ally in Nizam al Mulk, a partnership crucial for stability post Tugur. Achieving internal peace, Erzan convened a state assembly in 1066, formally designating his son Melik Shah I as the heir and successor. Eager to capture Kesriya Mazaka, the capital of Cappadocia, al Baslan led the Turkmen cavalry across the Ofrits, successfully invading the cities. Collaborating with Nizam al-Mulk, the Seljuks extended their conquest to Armenia and Georgia in 1064, culminating in the capture of Ani, the Armenian capital, after a 25-day siege. Conflict with the Byzantine Empire from 1068 to 1071 In 1068, while en route to confront the Fatimids in Syria, al Baslan seized the opportunity to invade the Byzantine Empire. Emperor Romanus IV Diogenes personally led the defense in Cilicia, defeating the Turks in three campaigns and forcing them back across the Ofrits by 1071. That 1070, sorry. During this period, Aslan secured the allegiance of Aleppo's Mir Dasid Imir Rashid al Dola Mahmud. In 1071, Romanos launched another campaign into Armenia with a sizable force, including Kuman Turks. Franks and Normans. Arslan, having redirected his troops from the south, confronted the Byzantines. Entrusting his army to the eunuch slave general Tarangis, Arslan commanded victory or the generals beheaded. The Battle of Mazikert unfolded on 
August 26, 1071, near Lake Wan, the Kuman mercenaries defected to the Turkic side, prompting the Western mercenaries to abandon the Byzantine forces. Romanos faced betrayal by General Andronikos Dukas, leading to a complete rout of the Byzantine army. Capture of Emperor Romanus IV Emperor Romanus IV Diogenes was captured in the Battle of Mazikert and brought before Alpaslan. Casting Romanos' character, Arslan asked how he would treat the Seljuk Sultan if their roles were reversed. Romanos, displaying honesty, replied with the worst. Impressed by this candor, Alpaslan spared Romanos' life and decided to ransom him back to the Byzantines. Throughout his captivity, Romanos was treated honorably by the Seljuks, reflecting the respect according to a ruler. Upon reaching an agreement on the ransom, Alpaslan sent Romanos, accompanied by a Turkish escort, to Constantinople. Notably, a banner above the emperor proclaimed that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Following the overthrow of Byzantine Emperor Romanus IV, Sultan Alpaslan, infuriated by unfulfilled promises, declared his intent to conquer Christian lands. Alpaslan and his successor, Melik Shah, encouraged Turkish tribes to invade and settle Anatolia, expanding Seljuk territory while eliminating potential threats. Alpaslan's impassioned command to the Turks emphasized relentless attacks on Christians, celebrating victories over Yanal Bey, Kutalmush, and Salman Bey, who was the son of Kutalmush Bey. His triumphs reshaped the geopolitical landscape, favoring the Seljuk Turks and Sunni Muslims in Western Asia. While the Byzantine Empire endured for centuries, the Battle of Mandikert marked the onset of Turkic dominance in Anatolia. A legacy later, embraced by Anatolian noble families claiming ancestral ties to this Spartan victory. Alpaslan's military strategy and administrative brilliance. Alpaslan excelled in military affairs while his vizier Nizam al Muluk skillfully managed domestic affairs, establishing an administrative system that strengthened the Sultanate during Alpaslan and Melik Shah's reign. Military iktas governed by Seljuk princes were instituted to suppose the soldiery and integrate nomadic Turks into the settled Anatolian landscape. This system allowed Alpaslan to maintain a formidable standing army, independent of conquest tribute, by tapping into the resources of sedentary cultures within the Seljuk realm. Through taxes from traders and merchants, Alpaslan amassed sufficient funds to sustain his military and finance continuous wars. Suleiman ibn Kutalmish's role Suleiman ibn Kutalmish, son of a contender for Arslan's throne, was appointed governor of northwestern provinces with the task of completing the Anatolian invasion. While the rationale behind this choice is speculative, Ibn al-Athir's account suggests a deep emotional connection as Al-Basnan mourned Kutalmish Bey's death and lamented the loss of his kinsmen during their battle. Al-Basnan's distinguished presence Contemporary accounts depict Al-Basnan as a commanding figure, awe-inspiring and dominating, with an elegant stature. He was known for his distinctive appearance, featuring long, Thin whiskers that he tied when shooting arrows. Alpaslan's arrow accuracy was legendary, and his overall demeanor left a lasting impression. A pious and just ruler. Muslim sources characterize Alpaslan as fervently pious and just ruler. His unwavering dedication to the Hanafi mother was evident as he always had a Qadi, or we say, judge by his side, even during battles. This commitment to justice and religious principles defined his rule. Nizam al Muluk's portrayal. Described by his vizier Nizam al Muluk, the young Sultan was marked by an imperious and awe inspiring demeanor. His earnest and fanatical beliefs, particularly his disapproval of Shafi'i right, instilled a sense of constant awe and fear. Expansion after Manzikert. 
Following the victory at Mandikert, Alpastan's dominion expanded across a significant portion of Western Asia, eager to reclaim the ancestral seat of his forebearers in Turkestan. He assembled a formidable army and marched towards the Oxus. However, before crossing the river, he faced resistance from a rebel, Yusuf al Khwarizmi, whose fortress needed to be subdued. Al Baslan, perhaps hastening against his color hearted adversary, persuaded the rebel to submit by promise, promising him perpetual ownership of his lands. Conquest and Tragedy in Turkestan in the pursuit of Turkestan's conquest, al encountered challenges including the spirited defense of fortresses. Notably, Yusuf al Harani, a rebel, fiercely resisted and was promised perpetual ownership in exchange for submission. Yet, the situation took a tragic turn when brought before the Sultan, Yusuf attempted an attack, striking three blows before being killed. Despite these challenges, al Bastan's determination and strategic prowess marked this phase of his reign. Legacy and Succession On November 24, 1072, merely four days after Yusuf's dramatic end, al Bastan passed away and found his final resting place in Merv. Before his death, he designated his 18-year-old son, Malik Shah, as his successor leaving a legacy of conquest and a new era of the Seljuk Empire. Alpaslan's Wives and Offsprings Alpaslan had several wives including Safariya Hasun, who bore him a daughter named Sifri Hasun. In 1071-72, Sifri Hasun married Abbasid Caliph al muqtadi Safariya passed away in Isfahan in 1073-1074, Aka Hatun, another wife, was previously married to Sultan Tugrul, and Al Paslan married her after Tugrul died in 1063. Shah Hatun, daughter of Qadir Khan Yusuf and former wife of Ghaznavid Masud, was also among his wives. Additionally, he married the daughter of the Georgian king Bagrat IV in 1067 or 68. Though the marriage ended in divorce and she later wed Fadlan, al Paslan's son included Malik Shah I, Tutush I, Tekish, and Arslan Arbud. Among his daughters, one married the son of Kud Sukhap in 1068, another, Zulaikha Hatun, were a Muslim in 1086 or 87, and Aisha Hatun married Shamsul Mulk Nasser, son of Ibrahim Khan Tamgaj. So, that's all for today. See you in another episode, inshallah. Allah Hafiz.